Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I want to talk to you about the Lyrid Meteor Shower which peaks on the night of the 22nd into the 23rd of April. Now the Lyrid Meteor Shower is an annual meteor shower a bit like the Perseids and the Geminids. You get meteor showers or shooting stars as you might know them regularly every year when the Earth orbits the sun it passes into the tails of past comets different meteor showers different tails of comets now the comet that causes the lyrid the dog kicking up over it the comet that causes the lyrid meteor shower is called comet thatcher as the earth orbits the sun like this it goes into these tails of comets, asteroids, dust tails and what happens is when it goes into those dust tails that dust comes into the Earth's atmosphere and it's mostly like tiny tiny grains of sand. You might get the odd like um, I don't know like a stone or something and those would be really really bright fireballs. Now have you ever seen a shooting star? Let me know in the comments because the Lyrid meteor shower is a pretty good meteor shower. It's not the best. I would probably say the Geminids is probably the best meteor shower of the year, followed by the Perseids, which is in August. That's looking good for this year, but the Lyrids is worth looking at. Now, to have a good chance of seeing these meteors or shooting stars, as you might know them, is to find a dark sky site. Now, I'm here at home. I'm in Blackpool, UK. It's light pollution all over the place, but I've actually captured meteors from here. I'm going to show you a picture on the screen now of a Gemini fireball that flew right over the top of the house there. Look at this amazing picture. This is the sort of thing that you can capture when you look up. You just never know. That was part of the Geminid meteor shower, which happens in December. But we're talking about the Lyrids in this video. I'm going to show you now a picture of a Lyrid, which I captured from around about half an hour's drive from where I am right now. We're looking at towards the eastern part of the sky and the Lyrid meteors actually come from or the direction of Lyra, the constellation of Lyra. This is how you can distinguish a Lyrid meteor because they trace from that part of the sky and that is towards the east in the evening and into the morning as well. Now it does get higher up as well. Now you're just looking at this picture now which I took of a Lyrid meteor. You can actually even see the radiant on there. Now I don't always actually um, advise that you look towards the radiant. That's the area where the meteors are almost coming straight towards us because the Earth is moving that way. You actually want to pick any other part of the sky really. Just look anywhere and you've got a great chance of seeing a Lyrid meteor like this one. It even left a vapor trail. Check out this little video I've got of that meteor. When that meteor came into the atmosphere it left like a vapor trail behind it. Can you see that? Absolutely amazing. Um, so like I say, you don't get to see that many of these meteors. There's only about, I would say probably 25 visible in the whole sky in one hour, but you can't really go off that, I'm afraid. The zenithal hourly ray is around about 20 to 25, but that's assuming you can see the whole sky and the radiant is overhead, but that's never really going to happen. So what we have to do is we have to try and sort of, you know, uh, work it out. Well, I could probably say, well, I would probably say if you were to look out and pick an area of sky to look at, a dark area of sky, try and get out of town if you can, go towards the country, don't be looking over any light pollution and just look at an area of sky, preferably after midnight when the radiant is higher. Now Vega is part of the Summer Triangle. Now depending on where you are, you might be in North America, you might be able to see the Summer Triangle after midnight. It rises in the east and that's the constellation, or should I say asterism, which is overhead in the summer. So that's where the, these meteors come from. So if you see a meteor flying across the sky and it comes from behind it and it goes across in front of you and you turn around and that's where 
Lyra is, the constellation of Lyra, then you can be pretty sure that that was a Lyrid meteor that you just saw there. You can always trace them back to the radiant. If you're looking towards the radiant, you can still see them, but they tend to be coming towards us like that. If you imagine they're coming towards us, you, you probably see them go like that, short trails. But if you're looking, say, at 90 degree to the radiant, or even the opposite direction to the radiant, you get these long, you can get these really long trails of meat. If you happen to get a really nice bright one. So what I want to do as well is um, I've given you tips on how to see them. Like I say, go to somewhere really dark. I mean, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of meteors, but I do this all the time, don't I? I get out and I go to places. Um, I don't advise that you look at them from your garden if you have a lot of street lights around. I would probably get in the car, go to a dark place if you can, if you've got like a hilltop somewhere um, where you can park up and you can look up and you've got a nice vista and you're not looking over light pollution, that would be great. Uh, and just, just pick a part of the sky to look and you never know, you might just see a shooting star or two of these lyres. Anyway, I want to show you as well how to take a picture as well because I've got quite a lot of pictures as you can tell. I've got lots of pictures of these uh, shooting stars down the year. So I've got this camera here, it's a Canon 1200D and I want to show you how I would set this up to see if we can capture some of these lyred meteors. Okay, so here we go. We've got this uh, camera here. It's a Canon 1200D and this is an APS-C digital SLR camera and it has an 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens on it. And what we want to do with the lens, first of all, if we're going to set it up to capture meteors, we want to turn the lens to its widest setting. So we want to go right down to 18 mil. Can you see that there? It's on 18 millimeter. That's the widest setting that this camera can go to. Now there's something else I want to show you. Though. This can be quite tricky. If I come around this side, can you see how it has a switch there for AF and MF? Well I have this set to manual focus, but that's what I do see. I tend to shoot manual focus when I'm shooting at night. Uh, what you might need to do is to switch that onto AF if you're struggling and use the camera's autofocus to focus on a distant light or something. You want the lens to be at infinite focus. You want it to be at infinity. Make sure that the lens is focused on infinity. It is a little bit tricky. But if you're struggling, make sure that you focus on a distant street light or something that's a, far, a long way away that's at infinity and then you can be sure that your stars will be sharp. So I'm just going to stick that back onto M again because that's what I have it set on. But we're just going to take a look now at the back of the camera and I'll show you the settings for this camera. So we'll bring up the back now. Here we go. Can you see that there? Right, OK, so we're now looking at the back of the camera and we've got a few numbers. We're looking at the top here, folks. We've got M on the left. That stands for manual. We're in manual mode. You see this number here, 13? That actually corresponds to the shutter speed. So I can change the shutter speed by using this dial on the front with the finger dial here. Can you see how it's going up to 20? I bring it down to 15. I'm going to leave it on 15, folks. I'm going to leave this shutter speed on 15. That's a long exposure of 15 seconds and that's about as much as I would have it on. It's all to do with the type of lens we're using. We don't want to have star trails. We don't want to have stars that look elongated. So we have to limit the shutter speed to about, I would say, 15 seconds. So there you go, that's the shutter speed. And then this next number here, that corresponds to the F number. That's the aperture of the camera, the amount of light that comes into the through the lens. We want to have that as low as we can go. Now, if I turn this dial, can you see how that number goes up? F7.1, F8, F11, you can go up. Now, you don't want to do that. You want to get that number right down as low as it'll go on your lens. You might have a lens that goes even lower than that. F3.5, because that controls the amount of light coming. The lower the number, the more light that comes into your lens. And now we're on to this last number here. Can you see that? It says ISO 3200. Now that's the sensitivity of the camera. You want to have that set to where I have it there, ISO 3200, yeah? So what happens is when you get a meteor, if you get a meteor flying across the sky, you will get a great picture of stars using these settings here. And you never know if a meteor happens to go flying across the sky in front of your camera, you should be able to capture it using these settings right here. There you go. So there you go, that was my video about the Lyrid meteor shower which peaks on the 22nd, the evening of the 22nd, into 
the morning of the 23rd. Now, don't forget that after midnight is going to be better because the radiant Vega, or should I say Lyra. Now, Vega is a very, very bright star. You cannot miss Vega. It's one of the brightest stars in the sky. It's the alpha star of the small constellation of Lyra. That's going to get higher and higher as the morning goes on. So the longer you're out, the more chance you've got of seeing some of these lyrids as the radiant gets higher up. And you might just see a fireball or two, you never know. Maybe one like the one that I showed you earlier in the video, one of those absolutely spectacular fireballs. You might even see a random meteor, like I've seen loads of random meteors in my time. They tend to fly the opposite direction to the radiant, so you can say, well, if one flies across you like that and the radiant's behind you, well, you can say, well, that must be a random meteor or random shooting star, as some people might say. So there you go. I've also told you how to capture them as well, and hopefully you might be able to catch some. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've seen any shooting stars. And I hope you like this video, and I hope it's been worthwhile to you, and I hope that you get a chance to see some of these shooting stars, the Lyrid Meteors. Don't forget to keep looking up.